So today I'm going to talk to you about a new type of hazard that we haven't learned before, something that would create conditions like this. So as you can see, it would take a pretty serious hazard for something like this to happen. Um, and this was caused by an earthquake. Uh, first thing we need to know is what is an earthquake? The definition of an earthquake is a sudden period of intense ground shaking. And we can see in this clip that the ground is shaking so much that the camera here is shaking. It's causing people to panic. It's moving objects around and eventually it causes this building to collapse. So how do we get uh, earthquakes? Well, it's all about the movement of plates, whether they're moving past, under or into each other. And as they do these movements, they catch on each other. And this catching um, causes friction, which builds up stress. And eventually, when they finally move past each other, it releases that stress, stress into the crust as seismic waves, which is our earthquake. So to recap. Earthquakes happen because of plate movement, whether it's towards each other, past each other or under each other. This movement creates friction, which over time builds up as they can't quite move past each other, but they're trying to. Building up all of this stress, which over, over time builds up into something quite colossal. And then when they finally do slip past each other, that is all released as energy, seismic waves, which creates an earthquake. Now we've just got to look at the key features that each earthquake has. All that energy that gets released that causes the ground shaking, that is what we call the seismic waves. The point under the, um, the actual surface where the uh, earthquake starts in the crust, that is what we call the focus. And the point directly above it, literally directly above the focus, which is on the surface where you would have the most intense shaking is what we call the epicenter. And the other thing we obviously have to put on all diagrams is the fact that we have got plate movement that causes all of this. So as we can see on our map of the world, we can see that the plate boundaries and where earthquakes occur uh, match up quite nicely. So if we look down here in South America, we can see that there's quite a significant amount of earthquakes. And this is because um, we have two plates that are moving towards each other. And what we're getting is the Nazca plate and the South American plate are moving towards each other and we are getting subduction there. So we are getting a destructive plate boundary and as one plate subducts onto each other, it grinds past it, it catches, causes friction and then we get an earthquake. We, um, we also get earthquakes here at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge where the North American and the Eurasian plate are moving away from each other. These earthquakes aren't as large, but but we still get earthquakes as they move apart and tension in the crust um, is released as earthquakes. Uh, another really key area is on the west coast of America where we have the San Andreas Fault and that is where uh, two plates are moving past each other. They're grinding side by side past each other and as they do uh, the tension again builds up and they uh, um, get uh, energy released as earthquakes. If we look on um, the, the, in the Far East, if we look around Japan, you can see there's lots and lots and lots of earthquakes um, happening here. And this is again another destructive um, plate boundary. And this is part of what we call that ring of fire that has lots of volcanoes, but also because it's destructive plate boundaries, very, very large earthquakes. So the primary effects of an earthquake are those immediate impacts that are caused by the ground shaking. In that supermarket, you could see that all of the stuff that was on the uh, shelves came off. Another immediate Im impact of the actual ground shaking is you get buildings collapse, as in this picture and this bit of clip here. Um, these are the things that happen because the ground is shaking. A bridge is broken here, and so when the cars are driving off, uh, there's a big gap and they fall off the end. And so we can get uh, damage to infrastructure. This is all caused because of the ground is shaking. Another effect is that people can die because buildings collapse on them. Um, that is caused by the immediate shaking. Um, you also get secondary effects. These are those often those side effects that happen after the ground shaking. So it might be because of all these buildings collapse that people are forced to go and move to another area. It might be that people um, uh, lose money because their businesses have to close. 
Um, it could be um, due to the fact is that the, the, the government has to pay out lots of money in insurance because lots of people's uh, houses have collapsed. Those are all secondary effects that happen after the ground shaking. Another secondary effect that you can get caused by earthquakes is you get fires. Uh, the initial earthquake breaks things like um, electricity wires and gas mains, which then fires happen afterwards. Uh, as with a lot of these um, effects, fires, they can happen hours, sometimes days after the initial event, and that's why they are secondary effects. One of the secondary effects I've said can last months, or maybe years. Uh, New Zealand had a huge earthquake and loads of houses were damaged, so the government had to pay insurance for that, and that had an economic impact for weeks, and all of this land now can't be used. They've had to remove all the homes. That's a long-term secondary effect.